Professor Diaz here, and in this video I'm going to explain uh, economic efficiency as it pertains to consumer surplus and producer surplus. So to understand this, I want you to imagine that, they're, um, that, that you're trying to go buy a car. So let's say this here is you, and you are trying to go buy a car, and your budget for that car is $2,000. Now you have an ideal car in mind, something that would be a good price for $2,000, maybe a make and a model, something in an a a year range, um, you know, a certain mileage range, maybe it has to have AC, um, but you've got an idea in your head and you're looking for the car and it's, you've got a $2,000 budget. That's the most you'd be willing to pay for the car that you have in your head. Now, over here is a granny, okay? And I'm gonna give her curly hair because she's a granny and she has the car so we'll draw a little car here and it happens to be the exact car you want okay this is the car that you want and um, this granny you don't know this but she would be willing to sell this car right for a thousand dollars She's had it for a long time, she's maintained it well, she has plenty of money, um, and she really isn't looking to get a lot of money from the car. She'd be happy to sell it for as, as little as $1,000. Now, she has it listed for a lot more than 1000 um, because it's a nice car, and it's really, it's been blue booked for $3,000 right and so even though she'd be willing to take as low as 1000 uh, you don't know that and she's not advertising that she knows it's blue booked at three thousand dollars and so she lists it so you guys meet up you go and meet the granny and you find out this is the perfect car um, this is the perfect car now you go ahead and start with a lowball offer just to see if she bites, right? She's listed it for $3,000. you would be willing to pay $2,000, but you just see, you just start at $1,800 and see what she says. So you put in an offer for $1,800, and sure enough, she buys it. You now have a deal, right? Now, what has happened? We have two things going on here. One is we have a consumer surplus. You, the, the buyer, were willing to pay $2,000, but you only had to pay $1,800, right? So you would have paid $2,000 for this car, but because of bargaining and negotiation, you only had to pay $1,800. This is a good deal for you. This is a surplus in the deal right? You're $200 better off. We get that $200 by taking the $1,800 and subtracting it from $2,000. $2,000 minus $1,800 equals $200, and that is what we call consumer surplus. Additionally, the granny, she would have taken $1,000, right? She would have gone as low as $1,000. You didn't know that but she got 1800 for it, right? This is even a good deal for her. We take the 1000 and we subtract the 1800 and this negative 800 or absolute value of 800, right? Is what we call producer or seller surplus. Producer surplus. This is the amount of money or gain from this economic transition transaction that the granny gains, right? And this is the beauty of free markets, is that when you have willing buyers and willing sellers come together, they rarely pay their absolute maximum for a good or service. And the sellers usually don't sell a good or service for the absolute minimum that they would have sold. So whenever a transaction happens, both the buyer and the seller have more value, right? It's economically efficient. Um, thing, something is produced when goods and services are trade, traded. If I, if I trade um, you know, money for bread, I want that bread more than I wanted the money. And the person that sold the bread wants the money more than they wanted the bread, right? So in every single transaction in a market, if you have a willing buyer and a willing seller, um, both people are going to have surplus, right? 
So we would say, again, just to recap, in this transaction, we have consumer surplus of 200 and producer surplus of 800. One last term I'm going to throw in there is that we'd have total surplus, which again is the total benefit from this entire transaction, which would just be equal to this and this together, the absolute value of this, mind you, uh, meaning no negative signs. And so a total surplus of $1,000. The, the economy is $1,000 better, more or less, because both parties of the transactions got a better deal than what they would have absolutely done at the, the highest price that they would have bought for or the lowest price she would have sold for. And this is the idea of economic efficiency and producer and consumer surplus.